Hey, what's up guys? JC with Ron Strong. Welcome back. Yeah, it's Monday. Monday morning. <laughs> you guys notice I was too serious on my last videos. I can't, can't do it. I got like, I don't know how many messages about how serious I was. <laughs> that stops today. <laughs> We're gonna talk about a federal and state gang that's been growing and actually like spreading out and it's usually what happens with uh, a lot of those uh, border gangs uh, let's get into this video with demand comes supply I always say that from small bands of teenage thugs the rival gangs have grown into citywide armies the bloods and the crips set up by the crew they done put a banger in the trunk of my car and left me to hang there no thing then attorney went and beat the case got a job digging holes for minimum wage had a dream that Cato said he proud of me stay here don't leave keep doing your thing quit the drugs but you know I went back to selling six times selling I went back to prison got my head right hey what's up guys JC was wrong strong if you are new to my channel subscribe hit the bell don't miss nothing. Ron Strong's channel specializes on my story that was connected to gangs, cartel, prison, 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 mafia, Chicago, Arizona, California. I've been all over the fucking place. But yeah, it's not a cooking channel. My videos are to inform you about gangs, prison, the underworld, and motivate you to not walk that path. Yes, sir. Today we're talking about the Border Brothers, or better known as the BBs. I did a lot of time with a lot of these dudes. They're all over the federal system, uh, state. Um, a lot of people confuse them with paisas and you guys have seen some of my videos I got I think two videos about the paisas I'm gonna do another one coming up because now it's 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 changing the dynamics are changing a lot more on their organization the Border Brothers were founded on the streets of Tijuana Mexico in 1989 in 1990 they actually started spreading into California and uh, north and south in 1994 the brother brothers established their first like like when when gangs are established in prisons it's because they're they're growing they establish like their sets that's what they're called they established their first sets in california arizona prison system a lot of these gangs that are in the border end up you know in u.s prisons because obviously you know in the border there's a lot of drug trafficking a lot of there's a lot of illegal activity going on so they either get caught on the uh, u.s side and end up going to state or federal prison uh, at the moment when i did fed time there was a lot of border brothers in there um when i first went into the system in 19 i want to say uh 1998 they were a few they weren't as big as they were now like this time that I was in there's a lot of them now in 19 actually in 1998 the Paisas kicked off the war with the Aztecas in the federal system and I was at Latuna at around that time when this war kicked off uh, and the Paisas you know uh, formed their their organization their gang whatever you want to call it uh, the Border Brothers actually backed up the Paisas and you know rode with them and you know their enemies become their enemies uh like i've told people in the past um i've had friends that are aztecas i've had friends that are uh uh border brothers i've had friends that are tango blast i've i've had friends in every possible organization you could think of um i've never been the type to uh you know um when i was doing federal time I got along with everybody, so uh, 
Everybody uh, respected me, and, and it's just how I did my time. Um, in the early 2005, the Barrio Azteca actually murdered one of the members of the Border Brothers in a Mexican Cerezo. Mexican Cerezo, is, that's what they call the, the prisons over there in Mexico. It's, a, it's the prison. The, they also made bitter enemies with the Salvatruchas in Northern California and some uh, street gangs. They usually tattoo like two B's on them or the number 22 or the Aztec warrior god and uh, a burning sun. Uh, as of today, their territories are Cali, or you see a lot of them in Arizona, Nevada, Denver, and of course their home base, Tijuana, Mexico. I was looking up the stats, they say there's about 2,000 plus members right now. I think it's way more than that because of the, I, the, the fluxion that I seen in federal prison when I was in there this time around, I, uh, three years ago when I got out. Uh, there was a lot of Border Brothers um, and the... Uh, Federal, federal holding in Florence, Arizona. There was a lot of them there, and they usually ride with the Bisas. They they become one. They still have their own rules, their own, you know, uh, agenda, uh, whatever you want to call it. They they they're an organization on their own, but they choose to ride with the Bisas, obviously because, you know, they're they're Mexican and they're both from Mexico and stuff like that, but. A lot of these gangs that are on the border, you know, you got the Aztecas, you got the uh, the Border Brothers, and there, there's a lot of more of them in that area. They end up working for the for the cartels as as muscle. You know, um, if you guys have seen some of the uh, narco stuff, how uh, the uh, the cartels bring some of the uh, Southsiders into Mexico to you know do a hit on El Chapo and, and stuff like that. They, they right now what's really, really been going on is that they've been, the cartels have been hiring gangs like that, uh, border gangs, or even, you know, the Maras are working with some of the cartels. Um, the uh, Border Brothers are working with the Tijuana. They, they become the muscle and they actually start doing, you know, all, all the work, all the dirty work. And gangs are always gonna spread no matter what. I always tell people um, it, it comes a point where it almost becomes like a, a trend where a gang just spreads out like wildfire, just like uh, the MS-13 um, uh, spread it out. I think it was in like 2009, they, they spread it like all over the U.S. like crazy. And it's I've seen it happen like in Chicago where uh, a certain area changes and everybody in that neighborhood moves out and what happens is that you got 20 gang members that are part of one gang and they all spread out and they all start you know groups and every place that they moved out it spreads out the the sd that happened to the sds in the uh, mid 90s um they spread out to waukegan joliet bolingbroke romeoville uh downers grove they they spread out because they had like a uh, where they started knocking down all the projects in Chicago and moving all the people that were from Section 8 out to the suburbs and they spread out like wildfire. I tell people, I share this stuff because it's just, it's a, it's a, take it as a learning, learning material. Um, a lot of people don't realize that you need to be able to recognize certain tattoos so you don't, you could be talking to the wrong person Say you're having a bad day. Let's just say like that. You're having a bad day and you you brush somebody the wrong way or something. You don't realize that this person is actually, you know, part of a gang or something. And, and you're, you're making enemies without even knowing. So I always tell people, because people will tell me, why, why are you sharing information about gangs? Why are you sharing information about mobsters? Why are you sharing information about the cartel? I share all this information because it has to do with a part of my life that I lived for so long. And if I could educate someone on not going that route and actually, you know, just by watching a video or, or listening to something and then they're, they're able to see, you know, the red light from far away and they're able to turn, that, that's what I mean. This is why I do what I do is because I want to educate you and not let you make the mistakes that I made. My whole channel is about from wrong to strong. 
and that's 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 what I promote and that's that's how I live that's my lifestyle pretty much uh, gangs they're always gonna be around there's there's just no way around that they're always gonna be around but it's it's not something that you want to do it's not gonna it's gonna lead you to two places either dead or in jail I spent 17 17 years in and out of prison because of me being involved with both lifestyles drugs and gangs so take it how it is my name is JC I am wrong strong remember don't judge nobody you don't know what that person's been through that day or what they're going through in their life so don't judge them give somebody a hug live savage stay in your lane and like I said you only have one life but if you live it right one life is all you need Yep, told you guys, this ain't a cooking channel. It's JC, raw, 100%. Catch you on the rebound.